myself, Max McGillibree from Beanstalk. Absolute pleasure today to have our um, pre-broadcast broadcast looking to promote the PMA Southern Africa Avocado Broadcast. Um, Clive, say hello. Leanne, say hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi. Fantastic. So what we're going to do um, in this little session, everyone, is we're just going to um, give um, a little bit of background to, to Clive, because he's a very important person in the in the world of um, avocados, not only in South Africa, but in, in the world. And that's why we wanted to just get a, a bit of a better understanding as to Clive's new new role, which we'll just come on to. And also avocados, the importance of, of avocados on the on the global stage. So just before we um, uh, get into that, let me just give you a bit of a, a brief on the PMA, the fantastic PMA. They're a key international national trade organization representing companies from every segment of the global fresh produce and floral supply chain. And each month deploying the Beanstalk platforms, we focus on a major area of South African fresh produce and discuss the key elements with the country's key industry experts so we can learn and appreciate fantastic South African fresh produce. So upcoming on Thursday, the 22nd of April at uh, 1300 hours um, South African time, and 1400 hours British summertime, we go live with key industri industry experts on the subject of avocados. And today we're going to hear from Clive, Clive Garat and Le Leanne Jones to give us an initial brief on the sector as a taste before the main broadcast. So Clive, let's talk about you, Clive, if that's okay. So you're the marketing manager of ZZ2, which is a significant agribusiness conglomerate in South Africa. He's chairman of the Perishable Perishable Products Export Control Board and has just been appointed as the chairman of the South African Avocado Growers Association and also serves as a director of the World Avocado Organization. If you don't, don't uh, if you're not aware, Leanne is the country manager for the PMA. How do you not know this in Southern Africa? And it's also internationally recognized as a leading fresh produce international marketeer. And we're very proud to have our partner sponsor, Kiss and Hub involved with the, this month's upcoming broadcast, and they support fresh produce businesses in over seven countries, managing regional, national, and international supply chains. And you can visit them by just dialing in Kiss and Hub on them um, onto onto Google. So, Clive, I'm, I'm going to start off with, the, with that inevitable inevitable question. Clive, what's your favourite fresh produce? <laughs> Mojos. <laughs> <Yeah, but that's laughs> <laughs> well, that all went wrong, everyone. We've done a 10-minute build-up for our avocados. So, Clive, what's your background? How did you get into the uh, the mercurial world of fresh produce? Um, Max, I'm a, I'm a chartered accountant by training. And um, I worked for a company in Zanin that was actually involved in avocados for quite a while. I was the financial director. And then I wanted a bit of a change in, in, in focus. And um, I got an opportunity to, to join ZZ2. As you mentioned, they're an, they're an agricultural conglomerate. Uh, their major product is actually tomatoes. That's why I chose tomatoes when you asked the question now. Um, and I, I actually got a position there as, as the marketing manager. And I've been, I've been with ZZ2 now about 15 years. Um, but ZZ2's focus is, I don't want to say shifting from, from uh, tomatoes, they're still very big in tomatoes, but they're putting more emphasis on avocados because the South African economy has been very stagnant for a while and we're not seeing much growth in our economy. So what we've had to do at ZZ2, if we wanted to keep growing the companies, we've had to look at export products. And we were well placed with avocados. We already had a, a sizable orchard. And we've, we've aggressively expanded our plantings on the avocados. And uh, we're now one of the larger avocado producers in South Africa. Wow, that's, that's fascinating. And what I've learned from our broadcast with Leanne and her, her great team and the, the experts that they've, they've garnered for us. I, I've always rolled out this stat that um, in, a, in a conventional year, South Africa exports four and a half million tonnes of fresh produce. What I wasn't aware that um, you also serve the domestic market with three and a half million tonnes of, of fresh produce. So, so you, yourselves as a, as a growing hub is, is significant. With, with, your, with your business, are you uh, predominantly um, serving that internal market or the international market, or, or, is it, or is it a bit of both? 
Well, yeah, that's the, exactly what I was saying now, Max. Uh, in terms of, of products like tomatoes that have got no shelf life, uh, they're very or highly perishable, uh, uh, onions and, and a few other commodities, those are all for the, for the internal market, for what we call the domestic market. And then, of course, the avocados, the blueberries, the cherries, the dates, um, those are predominantly export-based. So, yes, we do send a little bit of that product uh, internally, but the majority of those products are, are export but fantastic and it's going to be um on the broadcast next week um we've uh, got a, a great guy coming on a chat called um joe shaw roberts um who's the insights director for Cantar, and it's going to be fascinating to get his take as to where um avocados are, are, are going to go we were just having a, a bit re a bit quick reminisce in our in our office trying to remember when we all had our first um, av avocado and it's, it's a bit Clive Land, it's a bit so reminiscent with my, my parents. I think they can remember having their first banana uh, post the Second World War. <laughs> Av avocados are such a staple um, food now within within the UK. And we'll come on to that in, in a moment. Uh, Clive, are, are you confident that there's enough growth, there's enough potential for the avocado export market for, for yourself and your, your grower colleagues in South Africa? Absolutely, Max. You know, at this stage, uh, and we'll talk about it as we get into this discussion further, at this stage, South Africa only has access to Europe. Um, but we've got a big wide world waiting out there for us. We've got the USA, we've got the, the East especially, we've got China, we've got India, we've got Japan, South Korea, etc., 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 the Philippines. So there's, there's a huge market still waiting for us to get into um, at this stage. But the, the fantastic thing we do see is that the growth of avocados in, in Europe continues. It continues unabated. Um, and I can quote some figures to you just now but it, it really looking very positive for avocados in, into Europe. And, and the main countries that, that you and your colleagues um, and, the, and the South African Avocado Growers Association, the, the main countries in Europe that you're serving, would you know who, who that yes, is? Yes, I've, I've, I've got those for you. The, the four largest, the, the, the largest market is, is France. Um, and I think you're talking about a staple food. I think avocados in, in France now, it's just absolute staple food. is a must have. The second largest market, um, strangely enough, is, is actually the UK, followed by Germany and then Spain. So those are the those are the, the largest markets, but really avocados are eaten throughout of Europe, in Scandinavia, um, the, the Eastern Europe. Even if we start going as far as Russia, uh, very good demand for for avocados as far as Russia. Yeah, but it's going to be fascinating. That again, Leanne and I have talked about this at length on some of the other broadcasts. That if there's going to be one upside of the of the pandemic, is the fact that we're going to see more um, healthy eating. This desire Absolutely. for people to, to eat eat better, and, I, um, and our our um, prime minister, when he uh, suffered from uh, from COVID, when he came out, he said that one of the issues as to why I was so ill was because I'm I'm a fatty, and um, I need to be um, I need to lose weight and I need to eat better, and he just missed the word Clive. He just missed the words I need to eat more fresh vegetables. <laughs> I, don't need, I need to eat more South African avocados. But, he, he was, he was but, but we're seeing that within the UK that we've seen a 30% um, increase of sales of uh, fruit, fruit and veg uh, because of people are scratch cooking. Y yes, there's been a bit of um, a, um, a cannibalization of uh, people not going out to pubs and restaurants and eating there. But the hope is, is that um, as people, uh, as we climb out of the pandemic, that people will want to eat better and to eat better, they've got to eat more fresh produce and they've got to eat fantastic fresh produce from South Africa. So, so Clive, you would hope that, that you and your colleagues within the avocado sector are well set for, for, for the next few months, if not the next few years. Mm. I think uh, Max... Yeah. Max, um, when Clive and myself were chatting, we were talking about the avocado's new name, which is the pandem pandemic proof fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well said. Yeah. And, and so, so Clive, let's get on to your new role. How did so the, the role as uh, chairman of the South African Avocados Growers Association? Um, I, I, know, I know the answer to this, Clive, but some, um, there's, there's some people who seem to pick up roles in the UK within trade organisations and uh, it seems to be a bit of a rite of passage and, and nothing seems to, to happen and they just pass the baton every two, three years on. You're, you're, the avocado growers make such a difference, but now you've got the baton. How, how are you going to fulfil this even further? How are you going to make even more of a difference, Clive? Yeah, Max, um, 
I think, I think uh, as, we, as we, we briefly alluded to earlier, the, the big challenge in, in our industry is getting market access. So my, my focus together with our board is going to be trying to convince our government authorities to push harder for market access. Um, we be very exposed at the moment. If, if something went wrong in Europe and, and you know, we can quote that example of, of the cherries from, from Chile going into China and somebody discovered COVID in the cherries um, and, and they blocked Block the cherries. So that's that's all we need. So we we really concerned about about our exposure to Europe, and we really pushing hard to to gain market access. And had it not been for COVID, we're pretty sure that we would have actually got market access to two of the countries that I mentioned earlier. Um, but that's going to be a big focus: is working with our government, providing all the technical insights that they need, all the technical expertise. Um, before you can get access to any other country, you have to do what's called a pest, pest risk analysis. Now that PRA uh, can be extremely technical and what we've done at, at, at Saga is we've hired all the technical experts that we need to assist our government authorities so there can be absolutely no delay uh, from a technical point of view. Yes, um, market access is really about bilateral trade negotiations um, and that's on a government to government basis but what we're trying to do at Saga is we're trying to provide all the, all the support we can to, to the government to make sure that um, our, our market access uh, um, happens as easily as possible. That's, that, that's fantastic, Clive. So, so, so how, how can we, as a, as a community, whether it be myself, Leanne, uh, Beanstalk, the, the fresh produce sector, how can we help you and, and your members? What, what would, if we could wave a magic wand, what are you looking for? Is it, is, is it entering to those new markets or is it to raise the profile of South African avocado growers further? What, what would you like me to do with my magic wand to help you, Clive? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's really raising the profile of South African produce. Um, you know, what we need to do, I think, I think South African produce is well known in, in, in the UK and, and on the continent. But what we need to do is we need to start um, raising that profile. And the PMA is very well placed to do that, raising the profile of South African produce elsewhere. OK, so where, where would you like this to go with, with, the, with the, 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 the current sales levels that um, we're all positively experiencing of South African avocados in, in UK and, and Europe? What, what's, the, what's the realistic dream, Clive? Where would you like it to be three years, five years out? Well, you know, Max, if, if we look at the growth in, in, in Europe um, on avocados over, over the last few years, it's, it's been phenomenal. And if we could continue on the same trend where we, were, where we have been in the last few years, it'll be fantastic. If I can just quote you some stats, I mean, basically the avocado demand or avocado growth uh, in the USA is flattened out. In, in 2020, the year-on-year -year growth was 5.6% in the States, whereas in Europe, it was 23.3%. So... I mean, with 23% with, with growth year on year, uh, we, we, we well away. And together with opening other markets, you know, so if we can keep promoting South African produce um, within the EU, fantastic, let's do so. And, and so do you think there's, a, there's actually a really interesting um, comparison there? It, it has America reached saturation of, of avocados, well not saturated, has it plateaued out? Whilst in the likes of UK, Europe and, and, uh, and Asia, there's still so much more to go. Absolutely, I, I think um, that that's spot on. Um, if you look at if you look at the population of Europe against the population of of the states, you should be actually consuming greater volumes within the EU, and we're not yet. So I think there's still incredible room for growth. Um, if you look at the per capita consumption in Europe, it's still not uh, not nowhere close to what it is in in the USA. So I think our growth opportunity lies more in the EU than it does um, in the states. Okay, but you'd also still like to go to, to Asia to, to look Absolutely. to penetrate that market as well. Okay. Absolutely. And, and, so, and, and, and uh, Clive, I think you're one of the most busiest individuals I, I know in that you also serve as a director of the World Avocado Organization. And um, I think it is them that uh, run um, adverts for avocados on the likes of the Super Bowl. And, and so the, your learnings from your colleagues on that side as to what they've done to create that magic dust, that success for getting more avocado sales, presumably you can take that into South Africa and, and focus that to get further penetration into the likes of Europe and Asia. 
Absolutely. And and uh, the, the fantastic thing is we've had tremendous success with with World Avocado Organization, or, or WOW, as we all call it. Um, we started about three years ago, um, and I think that's actually what's driving the consumption in, 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 uh, in Europe as well, Max. Uh, we saw it in the, in the States. Once, um, once the guys started promoting avocados, you saw con consumption climbing tremendously, and we've seen the same thing happening in Europe. If you make people more and more aware of avocados, the versatility of, of avocados, you know, you can eat it for, for breakfast, lunch, and supper. You can eat it as a main course. You can eat it, uh, Leanne and I were discussing. You can, the biggest craze now is a chocolate mousse made from avocados. So the versatility of it, um, but, but what WOW has done, WOW has connected very well with the supermarkets or the retail outlets in Europe. And they've run campaigns together with us. And it's been a huge success. Clive, do you think there needs to be a brand? You, you, look, you look at uh, the fresh produce um, globally, well, not, not so much globally, but within the UK, we're not really allowed brands. The retailers don't want us to, to have brands because it's, um, it, it potentially will give uh, the, the, those growers, those marketeers leverage. So the, the only two main brands that we've really got in, in UK fresh produce is Pink Lady Apples and Tender Stem, um, and they've got very strong penetration. Do you think it would it further accelerate the growth of avocados, especially South African avocados, if we had a brand? What do you think? No, I, I don't think so, Max. I think um, on, on avocados, um, there's only one variety, really, um, which is the Hass variety. Um, yes, you get a, a few derivatives of the Hass variety. You get the green skins, but predominantly Europe has now switched over from green skins to Hass. So I don't think it's actually worth creating a brand. And remember, um, it's not just South Africa supplying avocados into Europe, but you've got many countries in South America. You've got Spain. You've got Israel, etc. Etc. So there are many countries coming in. So to, to really start branding it per country would be quite difficult. Um, what you really want is you want year-round supply. So whenever, regardless of whether it's January or July in the UK, you want to be able to walk into Waitrose and go and buy an avo. Um, and regardless of where it comes from, that, I think that's what the consumer is looking for. They're looking for the consistency of avocados in their supermarkets. Clive, well, well done. I, I learned so much in these broadcasts. I, I am but a marketeer, so I think you need to put a, a brand on everything because that's the only thing that's going to work. But what I've learned, uh, especially from some of your tomato colleagues in the in the UK, um, I interviewed a, a, a lovely chap uh, recently, a chap called Richard Diplock, who, who runs a very large tomato operation in the south of the, of the UK. And I was saying to him on broadcast, you need a brand, Richard, you need a brand. And he said, no, Max, people need to taste the tomato. Once they've <laughs> tasted a the tomato, they yeah. will never go back. And exactly the same with avocado and as, yeah. as, you, as you mentioned clive uh, oh where do you start breakfast brunch lunch tea dinner as soon as you've had an avocado and and oh. the limitless variations you it, clive i wouldn't normally say this but it's like a drug isn't it you, you <laughs> you're, you're hooked aren't you you just want more and more yeah. avocado. and presumably that's what's worked in the likes of the states and and that's why we need to create the the, the, the same feeling that that same taste sensation yeah. within, within Europe so as soon as people have tried an avocado so I, I, I just I just give, give you a story um about a year ago we, we have a lovely cleaner who cleans our, our, our blocks um in our offices and I was late one night because I was doing a broadcast and um a, a client a very kindly sent me some avocados and um she she said to me what, what's that and this is a, a lady from the UK in her, her 40s and I said it's an avocado and she said I've never tasted an avocado. So I gave her the avocado, told her what to do with, with it, how to prepare it. The next day, she said she'd been to Waitrose and she literally bought them out of, uh, of avocados and her life was transformed. I've been having a, an avocado. So again, Clive, just to get them people to have that, that, uh, that first taste, then they're yeah. away. Max, the other problem with branding is, is we export in bulk. So our avocados generally come in either four, four kilogram trays or 10 kilogram plastic cartons. Um, and, and so it's very difficult to brand those because generally what the supermarkets do is they pack them into bags or they pack them into netting uh, and, and they reduce the sizing considerably. So you would lose any brand that you, you sent across. Um, and generally what, as you said, the supermarkets, it's like packing it in their, in their own branding. And we totally relax with that. You know, comparing our tomatoes in South Africa, our tomatoes in South Africa are heavily branded. If you come to South Africa, everybody knows ZZ2 tomatoes. Um, but that's because 
because we've got control of it and we are putting the product at the final consumer, uh, the final destination where the consumer is buying the product. But with avocados, it's a totally different story. Yeah, I, I suppose my, my retort to that is completely get that. I just wish people understood the amazing stories and the amazing people behind South African fresh produce. I've been very privileged to, to meet the likes of yourself, Clive, the likes of Leanne, um, some, some of these fantastic grape growers, um, apple growers, avocado growers. And just, there's the standard stats within the UK, and I'm sure it's the same for, for Europe, that six out of 10 kids don't know where their fresh produce comes from. Yeah. So to be able to tell them the amazing stories of how avocados are, are, are grown, um, and, and that's the sort of the disjoint I, I have as to how we can um, tell kids um, and families about that. And there's, there's, there's lots of ideas about QR codes on, on products so that you can go back to the farm. But w would a family keep on going, going back? To, I, I don't know. We, we were talking in the office about how we should have live webcams set up in some of your members' um, um, at, at avocado fields, orchards, um, sites, so that we can just dial in and constantly see what... what so it's the, it, if there is some way to get the consumer and kids to understand the, the, how beautiful South Africa and South African produce is, as well as tasting it, I think it would be a, a, a double whammy. But we're still struggling to, to <laughs> hook that up. But social media is obviously an, an amazing thing. That's, yeah. look, look at us now. Uh, that we can, we, we can talk to people. We can talk to 95,000 people on Facebook and 22,000 people on, on LinkedIn um, to get them to taste an avocado if they've never tasted one before. So... So I th what do you think, guys? I think gem generally the future is bright. It, it sounds, Clive Leanne, like um, you you're working very closely with the, with the South African government. And there's always going to be um, issues just because of, the, of the, the nature of government. But by the sounds of it, if you can react quickly to market conditions, uh, whether it be new opportunities in the likes of Asia or, or Europe, you're, you've, you've got the team, you've got the product, you're, you're set to go in the right direction. Absolutely. Uh, Max, I was, I was privileged enough to actually meet with the Minister of Agriculture last week, uh, uh, Ms. Toko Dediza, and uh, she's very positive about the industry and, and you can see that she's working very hard to, to, to get market access. I think she's very aware of the challenges that our industry faces and um, she's going to do what she can. Um, obviously, as I mentioned to you earlier, bilateral trade negotiations are not always the easiest. Um, the Americans, as an example at the moment, said to us, OK, we'll take your avos, but you then take our frozen chickens. Now, the last thing we need in South Africa is frozen chickens. We've got enough, our chicken industry is big enough here. Um, a lot of previously disadvantaged farmers are farming with chickens, so we don't need to bring in chickens. So now you've got this trade-off. You know, what do you do? Do you sacrifice your chicken industry so that you can export your avocado? So that's why these things take so long and that's why it's so difficult. But they're working on it. Um, and and for us, we believe that, that the States is probably not that an important market for us. We believe South America much closer in terms of logistics. We still believe that the East is where we need to be. And so that's where we're going to put our focus. Fantastic. Well, Clive, if, if, if anyone can do it, if anyone can take South African fresh produce and specifically av avocados, it's going to be you and your, your team uh, within, uh, within the, the South African Avocados Growers Association. So before we wrap up, Le Leanne, I'm really looking forward to this uh, broadcast with, uh, with everyone uh, ne next week. And, and Leanne, I must just uh, nominate the speakers that, that yourself and the team have got. We've, we've, we've got fantastic Clive. We've also got uh, Trevor Duke, CEO of the Fruit Farm Group. We've got Lindy Strobel, Country Manager for Mission Produce. We've got Derek Duncan, CEO of uh, Subtrop. Uh, we've got Clive. We've got Leanne. Uh, we've got Giles Barker of Kiss and Hub, our partner sponsor. And we've got Joe Shaw Roberts, Insight Director of Cantar World Panel, just giving an insight as to the, the phenomenal growth that we're seeing of our avocados. Leanne, is there anything that you want to, to, to say um, prior to the broadcast next week? Um, yes, I would just say, um, everyone dial in. I think the, the avocado industry in South Africa is set for some new and exciting things and particularly some growth um, across not just new market access and openings, but also quite a lot of the transformational projects that are taking place in South Africa to um, develop our industry and particularly our small scale farmers. Um, and so we will share quite a lot of those insights. And I think the industry have been in preparation for the last five years, and they're really ready to, to go into a very strong growth phase and, and more sort of um, impact 
on the global marketplace. So I would say watch the space and, and dial in next week. Fantastic. I, I just love the passion and the excitement of both of you in, in the respect of South African fresh, fresh produce and, um, and avocados. So everyone, it's Thursday, the 22nd of April at uh, uh, 1500 hours South African time, 1400 hours um, British summer time. Uh, Clive, before we wrap up, I'm going to lead the witness on this one, one now. Uh, Clive, what's your recommendation has, as to how uh, you can eat avocados and enjoy it the, enjoy it the most? What, how, how do you like having your avocados? Smashed avocados on toast. <laughs> and, 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 and anything with it or, or just naked like that? Naked as is. But fantastic. <laughs> Leanne, Leanne how, how do you like having your avocados? So um, I'm actually, I've become a sneaky avocado um, eater because my toddler gets avocado smooshed into his spaghetti bolognese, his mashed banana and yogurt. So we've become a sneaky avocado house. So it just gets um, stuffed into anything that's been cooked um, <laughs> for, for the health of our family. Excellent. And I'm, I'm with Clive, um, but I don't go naked. I go, <laughs> where am I really saying this? I go avocado with a, with a poached egg on top. But avocado, mm. guacamole is, is just a die for on a, on a Friday, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, uh, Monday breakfast. We could go on. Um, everyone, <laughs> dial, dial into the broadcast next week. It's going to be, it's going to be fantastic. It, I just want you to learn so much about South African fresh produce. These amazing people. Um, like, like Clive and Leanne, and this amazing fresh produce majoring on avocados. Everyone, look forward to seeing you next week. Clive, superstar. Leanne, superstar. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-